Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Be Quiet Dark Power 13. This is a no compromise silence and performance 850 watt power supply. It's fully modular as you can see from this image and it is 80 plus titanium and right here PCIe 5.0. You don't need to mess around with one of those adapters like this. You don't, you don't need this. Forget that. It's, it's in here up to 600 watts. So that means it's 4090 ready. Although I'm not sure if you really want to run a 4090 on an 850, it's definitely possible. Just don't pair it with one of those, you know, 300 watt CPUs. Uh, this is high end stuff here, as it reads right there on the side. So let's get this out of the plastic. Take a look at what's inside. Check out that awesome connector. Got to break the seal. It's got a seal sticker. It actually says seal sticker. I don't know if you can read that. There we go. Okay. I should probably change camera angles here, huh? Let's take a look inside the box. We have, of course, the user manual, and I'm going to look at some technical data or data, if you prefer. Some of the specs and features of the Dark Power 13 include 850 watts continuous and 950 watts peak power, 80 plus titanium efficiency, it's an ATX 3.0 PSU, 12 volt high power up to 600 watts, every imaginable protection, and a 10 year warranty. Now we have what looks like a shoe box. That's interesting. Uh, let me get out the power supply first that'll be under this foam. I like the mesh, the metal mesh material that they use. Dark Power 13 is emblazoned on the side in a, I would call this a black chrome finish. Here we have the information about this power supply, which I just covered. And here we have, of course, the modular cable connection area. I'm not sure if there's a technical term for that. It's the back of the power supply where the cables go. So we have four, four drives and other accessories. We have a couple of P8 connectors. That's for your CPU power. A couple of PCIe connectors. You have your two motherboard connectors. And you have that 12 volt high power here. 12 pin plus four sense pins rated at 600 watts. So that's the power supply. So inside the Dark Power 13 shoebox, which by the way, you can't feel this through the video, but it has a kind of a soft touch feel. Okay, inside we have cables. Those are nice looking cables. Not those flat ribbon style cables. It looks like these are all have a braided cover. Not a cloth braid. I'm guessing this is some sort of a nylon material. And no zip ties here. These are all Velcroed together. Very nice. You can use those uh, Velcro straps to help neaten up your cable mess in your case when you're installing this too, which is always good. Uh, we have course the mains cable standard IEC cable I believe that's what that's called this is of course the star of the show because here we have a 12 volt high power it's a native cable we'll have to see how strong this this clip is compared to an Nvidia clip here's the 4090 adapter Let's see if there's any difference you know, I'm seeing this, this ridge right here does seem to add a little bit of structural rigidity to the plastic of the clip. The NVIDIA connector does not have that ridge. It is not ridged. Just to make sure you, uh, you caught that. Anyway, yeah, native uh, 12 volt high power cable. That's good. And look at this, you have a back plate for overclocking your power supply. There's a switch. I'll have to read about that. It has the Be Quiet logo, dark power. This is very classy, this black back plate. The wire that goes to the back of your power supply. 
where all the other modular cables go. I had to RTFM, but I did find it. Here it is, the overclocking key groups the individual 12 volt rails into a single 12 volt rail. You can enable the overclocking function permanently by setting the jumper provided directly at the power supply. This has a jumper? It's time for Adventures in Power Supply Testing. The host of this video has no EE background. Please leave your disparaging comments below. For a CPU load test, I've been running Cinebench R23 all core in a loop along with a custom 1080p windowed instance of 3 d Mark Speedway. And I had to use two of these Passmark inline PSU testers because honestly, this device is woefully inadequate for modern CPU and GPU testing. There's only one six pin PCIe input to pass through. So I have six pin to eight pin I'm using two PSU testers. It's it's not ideal, but the software does support linking two of them together like this. This is obviously not an ideal test setup, but it does allow me to power the 3080 Ti with inline monitoring with a full GPU load along with the full CPU load. I'm not sure about the accuracy of this, I have never recalibrated either of these inline testers. I've never had any power supply pass the slew rate test. So it is what it is. This is what I was seeing with these. And the next step is just to connect this to my secondary test bed and get that 12 volt high power connected and see if it'll run a 4090. What you're looking at is the Dark Power 13 power supply in action. That is an RTX 4090 Founders Edition graphics card on the AM5 test platform with a Ryzen 9 7950X. We have NVIDIA's PCAT hardware pass through when I have the 12 volt high power cable from the PSU, which is so much neater than running four PCI Express cables from the last power supply and then adapting them down to the 12 plus four and then having that go to the it, yeah, it's it's this is just significantly better and cleaner and then for a load test I have that same windowed instance of 3d mark speedway running in a loop I have Cinebench R23 all core running in a loop and Even with this graphics card pulling in excess of 400 watts and a full load on that Ryzen 9 processor this thing is running completely stable it has been for several minutes before I started recording this video and I will switch over to the screen capture from this system so you can see exactly what's going on with CPU package power, look at the PCAT real-time readout for uh, GPU load. Honestly, 850 watts seems adequate. You're talking about a power supply of this quality. This is 80 plus titanium rated. It's a 450 watt GPU. And it's about 170, you know, to 235 watt CPU. So it does seem like an 850 is up to the task, but obviously they make higher wattage versions of this. And I have a Dark Power Pro 1500 watt power supply on our full time GPU test bed, just for, you know, some extra wiggle room. And maybe if uh, we ever get SLI back, dual 4090s, that kind of thing. This Be Quiet Dark Power 13 850 watt power supply is currently $249.90. Its competition seems to be limited to just one model from FSP, the Hydro TI Pro, which is $299.99. So if you're in the market for this particular mix of wattage, efficiency, and PCIe Gen 5 compatibility, the Dark Power 13 is a good value. And that's about it for this video. The Be Quiet Dark Power 13 850 watt power supply works great. It's very quiet, though I wouldn't be able to hear it over my CPU cooler anyway. It has plenty of power for my needs, has a great warranty, and seems to be a good value for a product in this particular category. Thanks for watching.